Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants is part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this idea in mind, we will now talk in detail about plant tissues. So once we are thorough with uh, the understanding of plant tissues, then we will go ahead and talk about the internal structure of various parts of plant, like the internal structure of root, stem, leaf. So we'll spend time on that. So now when we talk about the plant tissues, we already defined tissues, right? It is nothing but a group of cells which work together for a specific function. Now we will look at the different types of plant tissues. Now broadly plant tissues are classified into two types. One is meristematic tissue and the second one is permanent tissue. So meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. What is meristematic tissue? Okay. The word meristem, the word merist is basically derived from a Greek word which means divided. So that means these tissues have the ability to divide and form new cells. So when I say tissues, tissues are nothing but they are made up of cells. Right? So these cells which form the meristematic tissue, they are capable of dividing and forming new cells. Whereas permanent tissues, they do not have the capability to divide. So for meristematic tissue, they can divide to form new cells. Whereas for permanent tissues, they cannot divide. So that means cell division take place in meristematic tissues but it doesn't take place in permanent tissues and that is why they are called permanent means it is it is going to be permanent it is all it is never going to change because it is never going to divide and form new cells. So that is why they are known as permanent tissues. Now again these tissues can be further classified into various types. Right? So let us quickly see how these tissues are further classified. So these meristematic tissues are of again two types. One is primary meristematic tissue and the second one is secondary meristematic tissue. Again primary meristematic tissue is two types. One is apical meristematic tissue and the other one is intercalary meristem. Whereas under secondary meristematic tissue comes the lateral meristem. Right? So this is how the meristematic tissues are divided. Now we will talk about each of these tissues, primary, secondary, apical, intercalary and lateral in the coming slides. Now in a very similar way, permanent tissues are also classified into two types. One is simple permanent tissue and the second one is complex permanent tissue. Again, simple permanent tissue is divided into various types. So what are these types? These are parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma and epidermis. So these are all the different types of simple permanent tissue. Now you might be wondering with such tacky names. But not to worry, we will talk about each of these tissue types in our coming slides. Again, complex under complex permanent tissues, we will talk about two complex plant tissues. One is xylem and the other one is phloem. So again, as I said, we will discuss about each of these types in detail one by one. So let us start with meristematic tissue. Now before we talk about 
the different categories or the different types of meristematic tissue first let us understand what are the various uh, properties which characterize a meristematic tissue so what are the basic characteristics of meristematic tissues these are small cells now for each of these characteristics let us try to analyze why do these tissues have these characteristics now as i said the main purpose of meristematic tissue is to divide and form new cells now if if you look at the amount of cells present we will see that there are many cells but the size of the cells are small now what happens is that if more cells are there in the same space then more cell division can occur for example to understand this even better better let us suppose this is a space now in this space you have cells now say there are two ways you can arrange cells in the same space okay now in the first case what you do the cells are quite big and this space is completely filled with these big cells correct now in the second case the cells are quite small something like this and again you fill this entire area with these small cells right now let us assume that if each of this cell is capable of cell division that means they will divide and form new cells so in this case where each of the cell is quite big how many cell division how many cells are there which are capable of producing new cells 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there are only 12 cells which are capable of producing new cells or which are capable of cell division correct whereas in the second case even though the size is small but still that small cell can also produce new cells because they are also capable of division so in this case how many cells are there which can produce new cells 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and let us suppose in all the rows you will have 9 so it is almost 36 so which arrangement is better because when we talk about meristematic tissue our main aim is to produce more and more cells so in this in which case more cells will be more new cells will be produced in the second case right because the cells are small but number wise they are many so that is how the meristematic tissues are meristematic tissues are composed of cells which are small in size so that many cells can be accommodated in a small space and if many cells are there then many cell division will take place and many new cells will be formed so that is the benefit of meristematic tissues being small being made up of small cells okay dense cytoplasm now they have a very dense cytoplasm now why is the cytoplasm dense in meristematic tissue i mean how will it help the meristematic tissue as i said these the, the meristematic tissue are actively dividing cells now when cell division is taking place so frequently and so actively that means the cell would need or it will have a higher rate of respiration correct the rate of respiration will be very high now when the rate of respiration is so high what do we need we need energy for that from where does the energy come it comes from the organelles the cell organelles you remember what are cell organelles right when we discussed the lesson on cell we talked about the various cell organelles present for example the endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus ribosomes lysosomes they are all cell organelles so now if your cytoplasm is very very dense that means you have more cell organelles if you have more cell organelles that will help you to help that will support you with higher rate of respiration so the cells can continue to divide actively clear okay next is thin cell walls now this is quite simple to understand 
let us suppose if this is a cell okay now if this cell wall let us suppose this is one cell with a very thick cell wall and there is another cell with a very thin cell wall now which of them for which of them is it easier to break cell wall is basically for protection so the thicker the cell wall the more difficult it is to break and form new cells right therefore these cells being actively dividing cells have thin cell walls so that it is easy to divide large nuclei now what the, what is the role of nuclei in a cell nuclei plays the most important role in the process of cell division correct because nuclei is the one inside which you have all your centromere chromatids gene everything is present inside the nucleus so nucleus plays the most important role in cell division so here cell division is the whole and sole purpose of metastatic tissue therefore the nucleus is quite large no vacuoles why vacuoles are not present just think for a while what is the role of vacuoles vacuoles are nothing for nothing but organs which are cell organelles which are used for storage of food but here the function of metastatic tissue is cell division and not food storage therefore vacuoles are not really needed no intercellular spaces so they are very compactly arranged like this can be very well understood with this example looking at the arrangement because if you leave too much of intercellular space that is not going to solve your purpose the motive should be more and more cells should be present in a small area so that more and more new cells can be formed by cell division so these are some of the very very important characteristics of metastatic tissues and i hope you understand why do they have such characteristics because for them the main purpose is to produce new cells by active cell division so all their features support them to divide actively always okay. thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again